Okay, so now what I want to do is just go through a few scenarios of triggers and bindings to help cement the idea of their utility. So we'll take a look at our first scenario. So every hour you want to read a new log file delivered by your application, and you'll need to transform the data to be ingested in your NoSQL or SQL database that resides in Cosmo DB. So here is our visualization. We have uh, our function, which is Python for fun. It's going to output to Cosmo DB. So we need a binding out to there. It has a, a trigger um, here that gets triggered by an HTTP request to the timer. And we got the blob storage. So you use a trigger timer. I guess actually HTTP shouldn't even be there. I think that's just a mistake. Uh, but you use a trigger type timer because it's a scheduled job that will run at a specified time. The trigger will be in for the blob storage and out for Cosmo DB because whenever a function runs, it'll be on a timer. And when it executes, it'll read data from blob storage, process the data from blob storage, and then write some data in Cosmo DB. So the key thing here is that this runs on a schedule. You're not, you're not, <laughs> even though it's there, you're not uh, invoking it like with a, an API request. This is invoked on schedule. Let's take a look at scenario two. Every time someone signs up to your application, you want to trigger an email. So here there is an HTTP request coming in and it's going to send out to SendGrid to send out that email. So you want to develop an API that allows you to send an email after request is received and uh, you'll use HTTP trigger because it's an API that will be triggered based on this request. For the bindings, you, uh, you won't be accessing any data when the function starts, so the in direction is none, and you'll, be, uh, you'll use send grid for the out direction, which allows you to send messages via email. Looking at our third scenario, consider a scenario in which you're using a queue service and you want a function to process a storage message in one queue and enter a new message in another. So the idea is you have a queue, Again, it's, fun it's triggering something and it's going to output to something. So in this case, you'll want to use um, it to, it says, consider a scenario queue service where you want to function to storage message in one queue and enter in another. So probably <laughs> this, this icon's old, but you probably should have had this icon repeated twice because this is the SendGrid logo. So just imagine that we, ha we took this icon and we put it over here. Very sorry for that uh, uh, graphical error. But um, the idea here, in this case, you want a trigger type of queue and a binding type of queue for the direction out because you're not accessing the queue in the in direction. You read the data from one queue and process it to create a new message and then to write to a different queue, which may or may not be connected to another service or function. So there you go.